Yo guys, what is going on? Moldy Cabbage Tree here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, me and my good friend Junkship decided to talk about the things that we'd like to see in the next Halo game. Now this video is primarily about multiplayer. We focus on points from stuff to do with ranked, BTB, mechanics, so forth. So if you do enjoy this video, please do drop a like. Definitely subscribe if you are new here and make sure that notifications are set to all so you don't miss out on a single video. Alongside this, please do share all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And finally, make sure that you check out all of our links in the description. You'll find all of my links and all of Junk Ship's links. Junk does a lot of streaming on Twitch, so please do go and check out his Twitch channel. It is phenomenal. And also make sure that you take a look at his YouTube channel as well. And now guys, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Bye guys, see you in a bit. Alright then guys, so the first point I'd like to make is about maps. Now I would love to see more developer made maps in the next Halo game. Now this is not to say that I don't like the Forge made maps that we've been getting, they're perfectly fine. I do enjoy them and I really do value the Forge community, Forgers, the work that Forgers put into the maps. And without those Forge made maps, a lot of the game modes that we have now, well, we wouldn't have them because there would be no maps for them. So. I do, I do value the Forge made maps and the Forges and so forth, and again, I do think that the maps are good and I do enjoy them, but there is a clear distinction in quality and playability between a Forge made map and a developer made map, and I do genuinely prefer a lot of the developer made maps over the Forge made maps, to come on, the developers have got more tools, they've got more money to, to splash on actually putting these maps into production and on top of that the developers have a greater understanding of how the game works how the game modes are going to work how people are going to play the games than forgers because these are the guys who have actually created the game in the first place and again that's not to say that forgers don't know what they're doing and not to say that forgers don't understand the game and whatever they do these are forgers we're talking about these guys make maps they do understand the game but just not as much as developers and i think the developers have more of a potential to make better maps than Forgers because of the come on the tools the experience so forth you get the point that I'm making but yeah please next Halo game let's just get a few more developer made maps in there it would be very nice to see and now my second point I'd like to see some fixes to the matchmaking system now in Halo Infinite we've got this problem where if you play good you get punished now I don't know what that's what why that happens maybe that's to do with the uh, hidden rank the MMR I'm not entirely sure, I do know that it's very annoying, I have a couple of good matches and then the match after that, you know, load into a game, the enemy, the enemy team is stacked, you've got four guys, for example I'm playing Team Slayer, you've got four guys, they're really good, they're all similar skill level, then you've got my team as me, another guy who's the same as me and then you've just got two people who go like 0 and 11. The game purposely tries to just ruin your experience because you've played good, it tries to force that 50-50 win rate. And I don't think that's right. It's a very draining experience when that happens. And it just lowers the incentive for me to play the game. Why am I going to play a game that's going to punish me for playing good? But it's not to say that I don't, you know, necessarily enjoy Halo Infinite matchmaking. I do. But when that happens, it is very draining and it is very annoying. And again, I just don't think that it's fair. So hopefully in the next Halo game, this issue gets rectified and we get to see a more fair matchmaking system you know puts us in matches with people who are of an equal sort of skill level a bit higher a bit lower you know a good mixture all right so my third point i would like to talk about the progression system in halo infinite and what i'd like to see change for the next halo game now the first thing i'm going to be talking about is the fact we've gone from seasons to operations that, that it just the progression system in terms of like the battle passes it's just not set in stone i don't like that personally I preferred it when we were on the 100 tier seasons, although they came, you know, they took more time to, to come along and to be implemented. I preferred it. It felt like more of a grind, whereas the operations, I can complete an operation like one night if I really try, maybe two at a stretch. But I, if, if I really wanted to put the time in, I could complete one of those operations within two days maximum, absolute maximum it would take me. It's just, there's not much to work for. And on top of that, there is still quite a lot of filler content in the 20 tiers of, of Battle Pass that we get now. Whereas with the 100 tiers, okay, there was still a lot of filler content, but there was a bit more. It wasn't as bad because, again, we had so much other stuff in the Battle Pass. Whereas the operations, there's not really that much in there because it is only 20 tiers after all. But on the bright side, we do get these 
these battle passes, these operations quite frequently. Um, not as frequent as I'd like, but you can't have them too frequently because, I mean, some people aren't, aren't going to sit there for like a whole day grinding out a battle pass, are they? Not everyone does that. I don't do that. I was just making a point. Also, I'd like to talk about the career rank system that we've got in Halo Infinite. The next Halo game, I think, will need a ranking system similar to the one in Halo Reach, Halo 5, or of course, Halo Infinite. If we're going to go down the route of, of, of the Halo Infinite career rank system, I'd like to see it be a little bit longer, like Halo Reach or Halo 5. Uh, I just I just think those are a lot better. There was, again, more to grind for, and it wasn't as common to see max ranks. Seeing max ranks, seeing hero ranks in Halo Infinite is pretty common. I've, practically every match I've been in recently, there's been at least one hero rank. So it just shows how easy easy is to actually get hero rank um you know seeing inheritors around in halo reach seeing 152s in halo 5 it was it was it wasn't sort of, sort of you know super rare but it wasn't as common so my final point i'm going to be talking a little bit about the sandbox now it's not sort of in the sense of there's, there's things wrong with the sandbox in halo infinite and then the stuff i'd want to see changed in the current sandbox for halo 7 or halo the endless whatever you want to call it but it's more so things I'd like to see come back to the game. So we're talking the fuel rod cannon, the spiker, the SMG, the shotgun, the brute shot. These were all leaked for Halo Infinite back in, in the early days of the game. And it just would have been nice to see these classic weapons come back. And even having weapon variants like we had in Halo 5, more so over the Halo Infinite weapon variants, that, that would have been nice too. And it would be nice to see those come back in Halo 7 or the next Halo game again, however you want to label it. And also, I would like to see the Falcon come back. Now, everyone's been on about this Falcon coming back because it was leaked for Halo Infinite. Now, I don't really see how it would work with Halo Infinite because I don't think the BTB maps are big enough, to be honest. But if we had bigger big team battle maps in Halo 7, Halo the Endless, the next Halo game, I think that it could work. So, I don't know, that, that one's, you can speculate about that one, but again, I, I would like to see the Falcon come back, I do love it as a vehicle, but I just don't see how it would serve much of a purpose in Halo Infinite, but again, maybe in the next game. But anyway, that's enough of me rambling, I'm now going to pass this one over to Junk. But anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed the points that I made, I hope that you can, you know, understand the things that I'm saying, and please do share your opinions on the points I've made in the comments down below, and now I'm going to pass this one over to my good friend, Junkship. All right, hi, I'm Junk. Um, I'm a Twitch streamer. I primarily play BTV on Infinite, and uh, here are my general changes um, that I would like to see in the next Halo game. Um, I'm gonna start with probably the one that makes the most sense for me: BTV changes. So for me, BTV right now is kind of um, it's a bit of a struggle to play right now, especially with the current meta um, vehicles. Who would have thought? Yeah. Um, and there's just a lot of things that I would change about the vehicles that are implemented in particular, starting with, I feel like power vehicles like tanks and banshees, they should not be able to spawn in your base. I feel like they should be how like they were in the older games where they're more of a point of contestment that you should fight for. What can end up happening is that the enemy team can potentially end up with too much of an advantage if they were to say, get a hold of your other banshee or your raid. It just creates too much of an upper playing field. And speaking of upper playing fields, I also wanted to talk about KBM and controllers because that, especially in BTB and probably in competitive, has been a huge topic for debate. And in terms of BTB, I feel like controller players should have a vehicle sensitivity slider because M and K, especially with say the Banshee in particular, is really broken because you can do like a whole 180 with just a simple wrist flick and it's just a huge pain in the ass to try and kill one. And while we're on the topic of BTB vehicles in general, there needs to be a change to the tanks. More specifically, they need to fix the turret exploit if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically, if you get boarded in a tank and you have an empty turret, you can switch to it and avoid any kind of death. That needs to be fixed. I don't know how it isn't already. Um, it's just something I would like to not see in the next game if, if, in particular. And there just should just be overall more counters, more weapons to deal with the vehicles, like, you know, say the Spartan laser. I would love to see that come back. I'm sure Moldy has already probably touched on it. While we're on the topic of game modes, wanted to talk about ranked. So ranked, as 
it stands right now is a little bit iffy to play um this is due to the fact that um your ranking has no like your ranking is not affected at all by how you perform in your placement games it's more performed on and this is gonna make no sense to like anybody here on how you perform in social games for example you could start a new account play really really well in your social games and you'll rank diamond five the max rank you can get off a of placement which is just straight bogus on top of that um i feel like it, if you are searching in a lobby with your friends and you know you're going up against a team that just has significantly better players you should be rewarded for winning that game instead of just getting like the minimum csr as possible and while we're on the topic of um, matching with teams i feel like they should remove the csr cap that's currently in place in infinite um i would love to see in the future that you like four stacks only have the ability to match other four stacks you know solo queuing should be limited to you should only be able to match like duos maybe trios on rare instances but for the most part it should be strictly like solo queues and duo queues since we were talking about mouse and keyboard earlier with xbox i would also love to see input based matchmaking making a return because i feel like in competitive or ranked in particular some people can kick up a storm about that now i do understand you know things like you know these specific types of matchmaking co strictly comes down to population so if you know the next halo game were to have you know somewhat of a more flourishing population i would love to see these features come back um and i'll just talk to you about one feature i would not like to come back just the overall fucking free to play system because in my honest opinion, I feel like it's an excuse for companies to release unfinished games. This has been very apparent in Infinite, as well as other free-to-play games. And just overall, I feel like if we were to return to, you know, paying for Halo, especially since I feel like most people that are willing to play for Halo are the diehard fans that have been with the game, with, with the whole franchise, not even just, you know, one game for like, you know, pretty much the entirety of it. Those are the people that are sticking around now. So I feel like their idea of trying to appeal to, you know, the broader audience is great. But at the same time, especially with how things look now, I feel like relying on the fan base that you know is going to deliver is huge. And I feel like if we were to return to this, you know, non free to play system we wouldn't have they wouldn't have to rely so much on microtransactions and maybe we could see the return of things like you know coatings and you know armor pieces maybe those wouldn't have to be monetized as much since i brought up coatings i would also just like to say that i'm not a fan of the current coding system i feel like you start to lose some individuality and in how you want to customize your spartan i wouldn't say that i would like to see it just dissipate completely Instead, I would like to propose the idea of maybe making these coatings, you know, like color presets, you know, similar to how we have armor kits right now. And on top of that, I feel like the cores could be repurposed to a similar feature. And in terms of, you know, instead of having the cores, you know, with like these certain types of um, armor pieces that have certain themes, since a lot of the cross core is like sort of already breaking those barriers, you know, with like helmets and coatings and shoulders and shoulders and stuff like that i love to see the cores maybe return in more of a preset faction sorry not preset faction preset factor um where it's similar to like maybe a fortnite locker where you can have these certain presets and have the ability to shuffle through them through matchmaking but uh that's it definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments because i will definitely be reading them thanks all right then guys i'm gonna end this video here but thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you all and i hope that you like the points that me and junkship made throughout the video and if you didn't like the points if you disagree or have any comments to make regarding things you think we missed out and should talk about in another video please let us know but anyway i'm gonna leave you all to it now so do take care stay safe thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one bye guys oh, what, is, what is what is this then is this meant to be like a lich or something? Because it looks that way. It looks like one of those lich things from like I Halo 4 or 5. Yeah. That's what that, yeah, that, that's a lich. That's a lich. It is. Yeah, I remember seeing this in Halo Wars. This, yeah, this is a lich. So, is there anything up here? No. Fucking hell, they got.